Hi! Today I'm going to demonstrate for you my handmade card that you'll fall for with the limited edition Stampin' Up! Blended Season Stamp Set and Coordinating Stitch Seasons Framelit Styles. The Blended Season Stamp Set and Coordinating Stitch Seasons Framelit Styles are a multi-seasonal set that is available only through August 31st, 2018, if supplies last that long. I'm Shelley Godby, the owner and CEO of Stamping Smiles, and for 17 years I've been teaching others how to create their own hand stamp smiles. Included with the beautiful images are six greetings, and we're going to use my favorite one on my handmade card that you'll fall for. Here's a closer view of the Blended Season stamp set and the Coordinating Stitch Seasons Framelits dies. Each of these are available through August 31st, 2018 only, if supplies last that long. But if you use the special bundle item number I've listed right here, you'll save 10% on both. And boy, we like to save money. So I'm going to go ahead and put this aside and grab my Very Vanilla Thick cardstock. Because I'm doing a fall card, I wanted a warm cardstock. And I chose thick because I'm going to be coloring with the Stampin' Blends, and it's recommended to use either the Whisper White or very vanilla thick cardstock for that. All right, and because we're using the Stampin' Blends, we need to use the Tuxedo Black Memento ink pad. <laughs> okay, and so, I mean, when they came out, we were told that, and I believed it, but it was funny, just a little while ago, I was doing a card for my membership site, Stamping Playground, and I was stamping on silver foil sheets, and I knew the stays on would dry, you know, and dry quickly. But when I tried to color with my Stampin' Blends, the lines just dissolved. So you really do need the Tuxedo Black Memento ink pad. Okay, so um, my stamp is a good size, kind of a little bit bigger than my pad. So when that happens, I like to turn it rubber side up and go ahead and ink it up. There we go. All right. Now you see this. I wasn't trying to, but I got ink on, on here. And it's easy to accidentally touch that when you're stamping because you know the the acrylic block isn't going to absorb the ink not like a wood block would so just in case I touched it and didn't mean to I give a quick swipe on my stamping sleeve so I don't end up sponging my cardstock now I made this larger than I needed because I need to have this just right to fit in the in into the um well the framelit all right, and so, but while we're die cutting that, we're also going to do some embossing and other die cutting. So let's go ahead and prepare our cardstock. So I'm going to be using the gold foil sheets for an accent. And so I cut my multi purpose sheet to the same size as my paper. So I'm not wasting any. So you peel off that backing is with the print, and we'll put the sticky side on the back of our gold foil sheet. And there we go. So after we die cut it, I'm going to have a self-adhesive die cut because we're going to be die cutting with that leaf. And it's really intricate. And, and so we're cutting inside those lines. And if I didn't make the self-adhesive die cut, I'd be using a liquid glue afterwards. And it's easy to make a mess. You have to wait for it to dry. This solves all of those problems. So we're going to be die cutting and embossing. So I just need to grab my Big Shot. I've got my Big Shot die cutting machine, so we're going to start by building the sandwich to die cut the leaves that we just stamped. So I'm going to start with a magnetic platform. This is an additional purchase, but one I highly recommend. It holds my thin metal dies in place as I cut. And because I want this in a particular place, the magnets will be a beautiful thing. So the next part of the sandwich, we need a cutting pad. Okay, and then we have our cardstock and then our beautiful die and I can't wait to show you this because of the stitching and I'll be able to show you how it means uh, positive and negative all right so I need to turn this so everything fits in and that's why I had to make mine oversized there we go because I didn't want to cut off anything oh there there see that's like I said that's why my paper needed to be because I didn't have it quite down pat how to stamp on a perfect size okay but look all of our leaves will be fully die cut love it all right so then to finish our sandwich we need another cutting pad place that on top and go ahead and crank that through and that three thousand pounds of pressure does all of the work for us i can't imagine trying to hand cut 
that image just perfectly. But look, look at the stitching and see this is what we talked about on the positive. So we've got stitching all around and the negative. Had I, I didn't, but had I put that perfectly in the center, look, I could have used this as a peek through, right? And I would have had that cool stitching all the way around. I tell you, the the Stitch Seasons Frameless dies, I mean, they're available only through the end of August, if supplies last that long. And they are just so cool. I hope you get over to my online store and pick those up. All right, so now we're gonna do some more die cutting. So the sandwich isn't going to change. Remember, we did the gold foil sheets with the multi-purpose adhesive sheet on the back. And then we have our fall leaf. There we go. And that's going to help hold it in place. And because uh, I cut it to size, I don't want to cut, put through more of the gold foil sheets than I need. I made a mistake one time. Didn't think it was. Instead of cutting it down to the size I needed, I put a good size piece on there. Yeah, well, the mistake happened because as we cut into these, we get all those cuts. Normally it doesn't make much difference, but it etched all of that into the remaining of my gold foil sheets. So we don't do that anymore. <laughs> so while I have this set up, let's go ahead and I've got these little fleur de -lis we're going to be using. So I've got both of those. And this is soft suede cardstock. There we go. And set those on there. And on the back of there, I, I already have the multi-purpose adhesive sheet and another cutting pad. And there we go. One pass through should have done it. I mean, it's intricate, but not so much that. There we go. It die cut it beautifully. So let's set these aside and we're going to do some embossing. Oh, very, very nice. And look, they already have the adhesive. It's a beautiful thing. Life is great. <laughs> so now our sandwich is going to change. We're going to put aside the magnetic platform. For one, it'll be too thick for the subtle embossing folder I'm going to use. Okay. And uh, if it's too thick, it won't go through. So what we're going to use is the Big Shot platform. Now this does come with the purchase of a Big Shot. If my embossing folder was regular size, we would put a cutting pad on there, but look how thick this is. It's a dynamic, so it's extra thick. So we don't use a cutting pad, but that's okay. We're not cutting anything. We're, we won't be cutting into our Big Shot platform, but because it is dynamic, we're gonna go ahead and mist it first. I have here a Stampin' Spritzer. Now I'm using the very vanilla cardstock, not the thick, just the very vanilla. I like what I get better with the dynamic folders. So let's mist it to get an even, uh, more dynamic huh, image. It'll be even deeper. Put this in. And this is a really cool look because it makes it look like the textured cardstock. There we go. And Stamp Up says to put it in, fold first. I always did it the other way, so now I have to stop and think. But we do need a cutting pad to finish the sandwich. And that gives us the, the right amount of thickness that we need to feed it through. And there we go. Feed that right through. And it's subtle, but it is beautiful. It's just adding a really nice touch to my cards. So we're ready to start doing a little bit more stamping and put our card together. So we've got all of our die cutting done. I did go ahead and die cut two more leaves in Old Olive and Pumpkin Pie. And then we have our subtle embossed cardstock. Now this is still wet. Once it dries, I'm going to use my bone folder to smooth it out, but I want to wait till it's dry. And then the last time I used my subtle embossing folder, somebody suggested that I rub some ink over it so you could see the texture. So there you go. I, I don't know if that helps see it any better. I mean, it really is a subtle image, but very, very nice. A nice touch to our cards. Okay, so we want to do some coloring with our Stampin' Blends. Oh, I love these things. Here we go. And so I'm going to be using Soft Suede in the light and the dark. Pumpkin Pie, here we go, in the light and the dark. Old Olive in the light and dark. And we might even use the Color Lifter. So let's go ahead. I like to start with the lightest color because I find it easier to add color than take it away. You know, just like cutting. You know, you can always cut off more, but it's hard to put it back on. And I'm going to use the brush in. So we'll take that off. There we go. And on my largest leaf, I'm going to use all three colors. 
there we go and just put down some of the light now while it's still wet I go ahead and shut them in between unless I'm going to go back to it really quickly while it's still wet I want to use the dark for some shading so it'll blend and I'm just following those lines okay at this point that's all we're going to do and then next how about we take the subtle and I like that brush end here we go and we'll come up over here it's so much fun playing with leaves isn't it Ugh. there we go get some good color in there looking good let's come down into here all right we'll just go ahead and stop oh let's go ahead and fill that in <laughs> couldn't help myself all right and again let's do some shading by following those lines I'm going to stay within the color I just did and right now it's a little bit dark but as it dries it will start blending together so let's come over here with our old olive and those caps they get a little bit looser the more you use them it was natural for me to want to just stay with all within the lines and then I thought no let's let's go over although I seem to stop right there but here you know that I, I split it I think that'll look a little bit more natural all right and again with our dark we'll follow those lines and as it starts to dry like I said you'll see that it starts looking more natural so this is just so much fun playing around so let's finish this leaf with some more pumpkin pie there we go okay that is all kinds of fun and then I thought boy I wish I left a little bit lighter just again playing around having a really nice time um, let's take the color lifter and let's just come in here and make this a little bit lighter and as that dries you'll see it it's pretty cool now that I'm back here I can see I missed this line right for my shading now that's looking pretty nice right and uh, but what we can do is for just a little bit more shading we can come back with the lightest one because when you put color on top of color just look towards the tip just go ahead and a little bit more so just play around and just really have a good time with these oh yeah that's looking nice um, I haven't really used my color lifter We'll go along that, that outside. Isn't that fun? Just play, play, play. All right, so while we have this in our hand, go ahead and color this one in. I decided to do some because when I rake the leaves in my yard, some of them are multicolor, some of them are still solid. And there are two tips on the Stampin' Blends. One, this brush area, and you have a finer on the other. So we can go ahead and try that. Um, the fine end for this it's a bit of a smaller leaf just so you can see to follow along there we go I just love these the results are amazing back with our pumpkin pie oh I didn't get that stem we can go back and add that though this one I decided to go ahead and keep solid too but the shading is just remarkable that you can do with these and even though I'm getting to a small area look how fine that tip is I can still keep using that all right beautiful and so again I can look use the same color and go along there those lines for more subtle but you know what let's just go ahead and make this heavier down here along there and we'll come back with whoops <laughs> we'll come back with the dark one because I would like even more shading and follow those lines oh yeah it's looking so pretty while I have this in my hand I know this one I'm gonna do oh I just did dark didn't I okay that'll be all right it will be just fine this one's just a more intense color right exactly because we can still shade even though I didn't use the light because when you add color on top of color and here's what we're going to do we're going to follow that line right there nice 
Very, very nice. And with the soft suede. And so do little circles when coloring in. You don't want to do big brush marks. You want to do little circles. If you enjoy coloring, and, and I do, you can just have a ball with these. And they just make us look so doggone good. So let's go along the outside. Look at that shading. Mm -mm -mm. Nice, nice, nice. And then the dark one for the lines. It gives it that definition. I'm just having a ball. Just love this stuff. Look at the vibrant, beautiful colors. And so this one, again, I'm just going to do solid. Of course, you could do all of them in, in multicolors if you wanted. And you probably don't need to open and close them nearly as much as I am. Because we're still working here. It's not as if it'd be sitting open very long. There we go. And so while I have this in my hand on this one, let's come down here. There we go. Because I'm going to get back to that other one pretty quickly. Nice. And here. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to add all three colors, even though this is a small one. Our little stem. There we go. You know, and I can come into, look, because now I have that brown. So I have my pumpkin pie into the green, and there's a bit of a color in between. That's kind of cool, too. I mean, these things, that's why they call them Stampin' Blends. They blend like crazy. There. Oh, very pretty. It's not as vibrant, but we can always perk that up with the dark. Life is good, isn't it? This is just really enjoy the Stampin' Blends. And so there we go. And uh, really pretty doggone quickly for the, the beautiful intense color that we have. Love those. So we have a little bit more stamping to do. And I told you we're going to use my favorite greeting in this set. You're the friend everyone wishes they had. I love that. So I've got a strip of Very Vanilla cardstock. I'll have my link to my blog post with all of the measurements. So it'll make it easier for you to make this card if you'd like. And we're going to use the Soft Suede Classic Stampin' Pad to coordinate with our cardstock and our Stampin' Blends. That's what's really cool about Stampin' Up! That everything comes in their exclusive colors. So you have a beautiful coordinated look. So for this, you just pick up and slide that in and see just in case it's easy to get ink on yourself without meaning to give that a good inking and come over here and hope that I do a really good job and if not we'll just pretend that I did oh not horrible here's the thing there are two sides to cardstock so we'll try one more time and if not like I said we'll just pretend want to come up a little bit I think all right because that is a tight fit I couldn't have done any better if I wanted so life is beautiful so take and push and then pull on that lip and then there you go go ahead and close it and again a quick swipe on my stamping sleeve so I don't smudge my cardstock I did in my last video I was like oh boy so I have a link under the video where you can pick up a pair of stamping sleeves for yourself so you're not smudging accidentally your cardstock either. Okay, so here is, now it's dry. And I've got my um, bone folder. And let's go on the back side. And just smooth that out a little bit. Isn't that nice? There we go. That's looking good. I'm not, I don't want to press on it and, and push the image out, you know, the embossed image. But that's a lot better than it was. So we'll start with this. And I'm using very vanilla thick cardstock for my base because it's nice and heavy and sturdy and so it'll look nice sitting on someone's shelf as they admire your pretty card and it can handle the layers too and so because this already has texture we're going to use mini glue dots they're extra strong adhesive dots so take them out of their container let's peel them back until you can see them in the light and 
depending on what I'm doing, a lot of times I would use one, but this is a little bit warped still. So let's go ahead and put one in the center along that top, and let's do two along the edge, not including the corners. There we go. So I just keep taking my cardstock to my mini glue dot because we don't want to touch them because we're using them because they are extra sticky. And you know, if you touch something, it does take away their tackiness. There we go. And so that's why it was nice to have that subtle embossing folder to have, whoops, um, to be able to add the very vanilla on top. It's one of my favorite looks. I love that. And I wanted the embossed, and I've said before, I'm not a fan of using embossing for the base of my card because it really weakens it, and it's not going to stand up as nice. So I get the look of that, but of the of the subtle embossing folder, right? I get that textured look, but I still have all the strength, and it's not as obvious because it's on the same color. like that a lot. Okay, and look at this. Isn't that pretty? Well, this is Soft Suede from the Nature's Poem Designer Series paper. And again, see, this is going to coordinate because the designer papers, the background papers, use the Stampin' Up! exclusive colors. So let's go ahead and, because we have texture, I want to use mini glue dots again. If it was just flat, the snail would have been a really good choice. And we're going to put this, and I'm wanting to center from top and bottom and to the right. Okay, that's looking pretty nice, huh? Once I'm happy, let's go ahead and press down. And we have this really pretty piece. And on the back of here, now I'm going to use, again, mini glue dots because that finish, because so, we've got our gold leaf, remember, we're going to add a little hint of color here. So because of that finish, I just prefer to use the mini glue dots to make sure everything stays together really well. And oh, there we go. Does that look nice? Okay, and so we will be popping this up with and Stampin' Dimensionals. These are these foam adhesive dots that are going to give a lift because some things are going to be going underneath here. So I'm not ready to adhere anything yet. I'm just placing. There we go. Oh, looking oh so nice. I'm just loving it. All right, so why don't we go ahead and again, mini glue dots because of this texture. But this piece is nice and flat, so four will be just perfectly fine. And I don't want to center it. I'm going to come up here to the top, closer to the top. Not you know, If I was centering, it'd be down here. I want to come up here because our greeting Oh, I don't want it quite, I want it tucked over more. Okay, so we tend to go to the center, right? I do anyway, because I like things nice and even. Isn't that pretty? And then this will be right here. And we've got all these other fun pieces. So um, let me go ahead and show you this one. This is the one we die cut. And we're just going to peel off that backing. And look, the adhesive is already there. Like I said, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And this is going to fit right in here. I thought I wanted it on top, but because it's popped up, it wasn't letting it lay flat like it needed. But we want to come off the edge. Oh, that looks so nice. And so we've got these other pieces to add and little fleur de -lis. But I want to show you something. And that is the Take Your Pick tool from the upcoming 2018 Stampin' Up! Holiday Catalog. And so we all got this on the Alaskan cruise. and. You know, very cool. A lot of tools in one. You have your stylus. You've got your putty for picking up you know, those little sequins, all those little things that are hard to hold. You also get a refill for the putty. And this spatula is what intrigued me. On the other end is a paper piercing tool. I thought, what would you do with a tiny little spatula? Well, here's what you do. I've got my Pearl's Basic Jewels. And normally I'd use my paper piercing tool. But what we're going to do is get up and underneath and then place it. Now that's pretty slick. And so you can't order that until September two or September 5th, 2018. But I just thought, oh, that's a cool thing. And that spatula intrigued me. <laughs> and so let me show you the finished card. Here we go. So we added the rest of our die cuts that already have the adhesive on them, the fleur de lis on each side of our greeting. And then here I just tucked in for a little bit more of a, a gold accent. And that's the gold metal 
gold metallic edge, 3 8 inch ribbon, and it's in very vanilla with that gold, and so just a nice little touch. Very, very nice. Now remember, this fabulous blended season stamp set and the Stitch Seasons Framelit Styles, they're available only through August 31st, 2018. Now that's if supplies last. I hope they don't run out before then, but I wouldn't risk it. Just get on over now to my online store to pick up that bundle and the rest of the supplies to make my handmade card that I bet you've fallen for. If you'd like to make my Fall Blended Seasons card, all the supplies are listed under the video and available to order now in my online store, www.shopwithshelly.com. But remember, the Blended Seasons bundle is available only through August 31st, 2018, if supplies last that long. So get on over now to my online store, www.shopwithshelly.com. I'm Shelly Godby, teaching you how to create hand stamp smiles. Thanks for watching.